We're continuing chapter 11 with lecture 2. And in this lecture, we're going to talk about macroeconomic policy. And we're going to talk about specifically how to use the ISLM curve to evaluate the effects of macroeconomic policy. So first things first, we want to come back to equilibrium and figure out and make sure we understand what the equilibrium conditions are within the ISLM. This is a little bit of a review from chapter 10. And the first thing we want to do is think, well, OK, what's the IS curve? Well, we have this equation right here, which is the IS equation, which simply relates the um, actual income that we have, our output that we produce, Y, with the amount of spending that we want. So consumption, investments, and government spending. Remember, we're working in a closed economy, so there's no net exports. And also remember that we're treating government policy or fiscal policy as exogenous. So both government spending and taxes are considered to be exogenous variables or fixed. They're not determined within our model. The LM curve represents equilibriums within the money markets, right? So we have essentially all the combinations of interest and income that cause the liquidity market to clear and all of the uh, all of the um, combinations of interest and income that cause the good market goods market to clear and when we find all of the interest rate that all the goods markets and all of the um, liquidity markets clear we have a short run equilibrium so the, it's the intersection of the two then that gives us equilibrium interest rate and equilibrium output so once we have this, this is our base, we can then use this to analyze well, what happens when fiscal policy changes or monetary policy changes. Now within our model we have basically three levers to change policy. On fiscal policy we can either change government spending or taxes or in monetary policy we can change the money stock. So what happens if we increase government purchases? That would be expansionary fiscal policy. We have a rightward shift in the IS curve, right? Why? Because that increase in government spending causes what to happen? It causes that planned expenditure function to shift up in the Keynesian cross. When that shifts up, we'll end up with, at the same interest rate, a higher level of equilibrium income, which means the IS curve shifts to the right. All right, and we also we know how far it's going to shift to the right. It's going to shift to the right by 1 over 1 minus MPC times the change in government spending. How do we know this? We know this back from chapter 10 where we derived this government expenditure multiplier. All right, so output and income rise because government spending goes up. Yep, 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 at least in the short run. We haven't we haven't talked about long run yet. But because income goes up, we didn't affect anything in the money market. So we have um, no increase in the money supply. So the money supply stays the same. Income increases. And when income goes up, that causes an increase in demand for liquidity, which is going to push interest rates up. Now notice, though, we did not have a shift in the LM curve. Why? Because the increase in interest rates that we see is associated with an increase in equilibrium output. So when income goes up, income or output, remember national income accounting identity, same thing. All right. When income goes up, our demand for money goes up or shifts up. And that causes an increase in the interest rate. And that's just a shift along the LM curve. So remember, if we change government spending, we're going to shift the IS curve and shift along the LM curve. Now, here's the thing. We have this initial increase, one, going to this new income over here, but that initial that increase causes us to have an increase in interest rates causing a little bit of back shift so income goes like that right it shifts back a little bit we don't get that full increase in income 
that's predicted by the government expenditure multiplier. Why? Well, because, well, the LM curve is not horizontal. In other words, interest rates aren't sticky. So interest rates go up because interest rates go up, we'll have a, a decrease in investment, which means we'll give back some of that um, increase or some of that stimulus. Uh, so the ultimate change in Y is going to be smaller than this um, that's predicted simply by the Keynesian cross. What about a tax cut? Well, consumers save one pint as MPC of their tax cut, so the initial boost to spending is smaller for delta T than for an equal delta G. Remember, we found that out. And remember that the multiplier for um, taxes are minus MPC over one minus MPC. Remember, a tax cut is expansionary. A tax increase is contractionary. That's why it's negative. And remember that these two, the two, the government spending multiplier and the tax multiplier, sum to one, right? All that stuff. And that it's going to be less than delta G. Okay, so that's all review from chapter three, or chapter 10, excuse me. Next, right? Consumers, or and so the IS curve shifts by a smaller amount, shifts by this amount. Remember where that comes from? That's the tax multiplier. We, we did this in chapter 10. Two. So the effects on R and Y are smaller for delta T than for an equal delta G, but according to the IS curve, even though they're smaller, they are similar in nature. So what happens? We have an increase in income, causing us to shift along the LM curve, which gives us an increase in interest rate, the real interest rate, which causes investment to, to come down just slightly, and so we give back some of that uh, excuse me, we give back some of that increase that we had. All right, so income goes up. Income goes up, but then we give some of it back because of the increase in interest rates. Okay, next, monetary policy. So if we just covered fiscal policy. Remember, government spending and taxing, that's fiscal policy. Now we need to cover monetary policy. What happens if we have a change in M? Well, M enters this through the LM curve, all right? Remember, there's the M in there. That's LM, right? So we need to, we're going to shift the LM curve, not the I, and shift along the IS curve. Okay, so let's say we have an increase in the money stock, which is going to do what? That's going to shift the LM curve to the right or down. You can either say down or to the right. Um, I tend to think of it as the LM curve is up and down and the IS curve is right and left. I don't know why, I just do. Um, but the LM curve shifts down, why? Because when we increase the money supply, ceteris paribus, for the same money demand, same level of income, we're gonna have a lower interest rate. And the only way that happens is if we shifted the LM curve down. This causes the interest rate to fall. With a lower interest rate, we have an increase in investment causing output to rise. Okay, that concludes our brief discussion of analyzing monetary policy using the ISLM curve. Now, here's a tip. I went through the ISLM curve and did all of the um, policy variables in one direction go back and redo them in the opposite direction that I covered in this lecture. Make sure you can do that. All right, it's just reversing all the logic. It's it, it, it's fairly simple, Not, no tricks. Just go through and make sure you can do them in both ways. All right, and we will continue in the next lecture.